Welcome to Conversations with Cabrera. It is my pleasure today to have my colleague, Ellen Bassett, uh, the you. new ish dean of, uh, <laughs> of the College okay. of, of Design. Ish. Good yeah. eight months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today, by the way, it's uh, National College Collars Day. So we're both uh, doing our best to promote the great collars of the Yellow Jackets. Ellen, for people who haven't had a chance to uh, meet you yet, you are a, uh, an urban planner. Yep. So what does an urban planner do and why, <laughs> why did you choose that why as did I your choose field? That? Yeah. That's funny. Uh, I tell people that uh, urban planners are everywhere, but nobody knows who they are or what they do. So um, why am I an urban planner? So first of all, urban planners do multiple things. There's uh, many ways you can go with an urban planning degree. A lot of people work with cities. They work with neighborhoods. They work with developers. They create the built environment that's around us. Um, I became an urban planner because I grew up in Detroit. And when I was a you know, 17-year-old, um, and I grew up in the Detroit suburbs, I was told never to go downtown. Downtown was scary, it was dangerous, you shouldn't go. So of course, I got in my car at age 17, drove downtown, and was like, whoa, what happened here? And so I got really interested in cities, city forms, economic development. And when I looked at where I wanted to go with a career path, going into planning was a way I thought that I could affect positive change in communities, really address issues of poverty. And so that's kind of what my impulse was to do my, my master's degree in urban planning. So now uh, a few months into the great city of Atlanta. Atlanta. By the way, I know you're, you're a walker and a biker just yeah. like, uh, like me. Exactly. Um, I covet so your bicycle, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you think? What do you think about Atlanta? Uh, I mean, Atlanta, I think the so when I walk back to my midtown condo, I always stop and look at the, uh, the plaques that tell you what, you know, Tech Square looked like before it was Tech Square. And uh, to me, it, it's an extraordinary achievement, what's happened relative to the redevelopment and activities that are happening in the city of Atlanta in terms of you know, investment, economic growth. But there's still really big lingering issues of the haves and the have-nots, mm -hmm. the poverty line, you know, a big, what we call the equity fault line, right, between us and the west side. So it's a city that I think embodies a lot of all of the problems and potentials of American cities. And so um, as, a, you know, as an urban planner, as a, as a researcher, as somebody who cares about the built environment, it's a super exciting place to work. Now, as the, as the dean of the uh, Georgia Tech College of Design, mm -hmm. you uh, produce great architects. Uh, great build, planners, even. Yes, great planners, <laughs> planners, architects. Industrial building designers. Con mm -hmm. Building construction. And musicians. Uh, and, and musicians. Yeah. But uh, in terms of uh, sort of the architects, the urban planners, um, who, in your view, are examples of impactful alums? Who, uh, like, okay. just to give an idea to those who are not in that field of, of the impact that, that this profession can have. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll go for the easiest, most evident low hanging fruit, which is the Beltline in Atlanta. So, a lot of you know that um, this, you know, Beltline, this idea of connecting Atlanta neighborhoods through abandoned train uh, rail lines was actually a master's thesis project for a student who was doing a master's degree in architecture and urban planning, Ryan Gravel. And while what, what's actually happened in terms of how it's built hasn't been exactly his, his vision, his advocacy and pushing it has brought it into realization. And that is probably one of the biggest transformations of the built environment in Atlanta that's not, you know, it's knit together disparate neighborhoods that didn't connect to each other. It, it provides a public space where people mingle and interact. It's had a huge economic impact. But if we're thinking about, say, the arts, you just walk it to see what the changing mural patterns are. And so I think urban planning, the built environment, I mean, those are really public spaces for democracy, interaction, getting to know each other. And that is a really great example of how architecture and urban planning can really transform lives. That's a, that's a fantastic uh, example as a, as a big fan and user of the Bell yeah, line. Yeah, exactly. Almost daily. I yeah. either uh, walk it or, or, or bike it. Right. It's uh, unbelievable. So, so our alums, of course, uh, they, they think about and they design and they plan cities and, mm -hmm. and, and buildings, but they, they also design smaller things, right? Oh, we sure. have a great school of industrial, industrial. Yeah. design. And... As a matter of fact, we've used the, the design concept to name the entire, the entire college. Yeah. Why does design matter? Not just for those who actually work as designers, but yeah. for everybody else, especially in a place like Georgia Tech. 
I mean, design is everywhere, right? I think when you look at any product or any place you're in, a structure, somebody has purposefully thought about like how this chair is built, what the curve is here, right? And I think in many ways we take design for granted uh, at tech, but in our, our daily lives because we only start to complain about it when it's bad design, right? Or when it's non-functional. And so I think that for us in the, the College of Design, what we're doing through our thoughts about what we're producing, what designs we're making, what musical compositions we're making, we're really focused on the human experience. We're focused on making people's lives better and so in some ways, when we succeed, you don't notice us. When we fail, you notice us. And I think what I'm seeing at tech relative to design is that we do all these great innovations. But do you know that ID, industrial design, is the largest? We think it's the largest, close to the largest, minor um, on campus. And it's because we've got BME students, we've got mechanical engineering students who say, OK, I've made this thing. But now I want to think about the human. I want to think about the interface. I want to think about functionality perform. I want to think about beauty. And they come over to us to study. So design is super important mm -hmm. to Georgia Tech, um, I think, at all levels. Yeah, in fact, um, uh, it's interesting that some of the finalists in the Inventure Prize, uh -huh, oh or yeah. some of the students engaged in our um, flagship mm -hmm. student startup program, CreateX, yeah. they either have major or minor in industrial design. Exactly. And, yeah. and of course, you and I are very proud of one of your alums. Uh, yeah, indeed. Uh, ben Chestnut, ben who, Chestnut exactly. who became a widely successful entrepreneur here in Atlanta, yep. created MailChimp, yep. is a software company, but he was an industrial designer, and exactly. he will tell you that was his, his thinking, yep. and the start of the company was about design. So yeah, if you were yep. to pitch uh, every student at Georgia Tech, mm. why should they take at least a class in design? What would that reason be? So when I think about the College of Design and kind of how we are different from other other colleges, I think, you know, designers are really comfortable with complexity and messiness. So when we're starting to think about a project or a problem or a creation we want to make, there's always this continuous questioning about, like, are we studying the right thing? Are we asking the right questions? And so, so it's less linear. It's more intuitive. There's a lot more sort of hands-on creative prototyping, making, tearing things apart, remaking them. I wouldn't say a lot more, but there's a lot of that going on. And so. For us who want to like develop our fullest um, innovator selves, um, exposure, if you're an engineer, having exposure to design and design mm -hmm. processes, um, using our processes of a lot more, well, a lot of um, user engagement, thinking about the human experience, but also looking for these goals of like beauty and functionality, I think that's really exciting. And so I'd love to see way more students come through design because it's so complementary to what they're doing in, say, maybe more narrowly oriented tech fields. Whenever I, yeah. I walk through the hallways of mm. the College of Design, I am really jealous and intrigued. <laughs> yeah, jealous that I didn't yeah. have that chance when I went to uh, school to study yeah. engineering, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a very exciting place to be. There's yeah. a lot of energy. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. So we build and plan cities and regions and, 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 and buildings and mm -hmm. even smaller objects and, and, and technologies. But we also we do bicycles too. We do. We plan bicycles. I've design, seen. Yeah. I've seen some okay, of the lots cool of bicycles. bicycles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I need to FYI. get my hands okay, on yeah. one of those. Okay. But we also have a school of music, oh music yeah. and technology. Some people yeah. are are surprised to to yeah. learn that you can study music and technology yeah. at at Georgia Tech. I would argue. And I know you would argue mm. that we would be better served expanding the role that the arts in general play oh in yeah. a place like uh, sure. like Georgia Tech. Absolutely. Why? Well, see, I, I'm sort of two impulses here. One, do I brag right away about the school of music, or do I brag, answer your brag question? Brag away. <laughs> brag away first. <laughs> so let me brag a bit about music. Yeah. So I mean, I think what's fascinating about our music school is technology is one stream, but we also have extraordinary um, performers. We have extraordinary ensembles. We have people who are composers. And, and so this will get a little bit to the second part of the question. We have one. Um, uh, faculty member Brittany Boykin, and she goes by the name of B.E. Boykin as a composer. She recently had a piece um, at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts called Morning, and it was M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, with the U in parentheses. And it was, um, she wrote the music, she had a librettist, and it was about the killing of Rayshard Brooks by the Atlantic Police. And it's a, a piece that addresses social justice, it moves people, it makes you put yourself in another person's experience. 
And I think the arts as something of enhancing empathy, making us understand the world, addressing critical issues like social, racial division, fraying democracy, the arts are totally, totally critical. And so her kind of piece, I think, was, to me, was super moving um, and, and kind of tells us why the arts are important, why music is important. So um, just in terms of our general music tech um, you know, degree and, and people in, that are teaching in it, you know, they're at the cutting edge of new types of music. They're at the cutting edge of new types of instrumentation. We have the Guthman Music Festival, which is all for new instruments. Um, that is a great space for bringing again to get people together. So you see it's an international festival. So we get people from all over the globe who come in. They bring in their new, new compositions, their new instruments. But, you know, they play music with our students. They play music with the Atlanta uh, music community. So it's a great sort of gathering space, again, for enhancing understanding. Mm -hmm. But also, again, just the pure enjoyment of of listening to music and seeing such innovation. So tra traditionally, I guess, many of our students who would come and major in engineering or in, in biology or whatever it is they, they chose, they may have come to Georgia Tech with some artistic uh, part of their, uh, of their lives. But, but um, whether it was hard to find a place at Georgia Tech to, to deploy that side and to yeah. grow that, that part of the students, right? I mean, some people, would engage with drama tech and mm -hmm. or or join a dancing group mm -hmm. or a singing group mm -hmm. or or, right. or a music group. Yeah. Um, should we be thinking about how to integrate more and, and more intentionally the arts into the curriculum, even perhaps creating new majors that allow uh, students to grow in that interface between sure. art and technology? Yeah. What do you yeah. think? So I think we've got incredible curricular opportunities, right? And you're right, we have existing curricular um, offerings that are really important. You know, LMC and Ivan Allen does terrific stuff, poetry, film, um, and, and a lot of the digital media stuff. We teach drawing and art, and we've, of course, got our music degree. Um, but I think there is a, a really extraordinarily strong interest in the students to have more formal curricular offerings. Um, and I also think there's spaces across all the colleges, you know, interactive computing. Um, I know that there's a biology professor who's been sort of incorporating design biomimicry and that kind of design into her classes. So I think we could really think curricularly what we might do. We might think about, you know, a school of the arts or interactive arts or something like that. The real opportunity, and, and you were at this conversation, is film, right? Because we have this extraordinarily um, vibrant music and film industry in Atlanta and in Georgia. And what I learned through the talk by the gentleman who used to be the head of the Georgia Film Academy is that we only have one little piece of the pie, right, which is production. But if we wanted to be at the front end of screenwriting, creative, production, and then at the p end of sort of post-production, all the technical stuff and sound editing, that kind of thing, we could totally get involved in that. We've got great writing programs, we've got great technology, we've got an awesome computing college. I mean, we AR, VR, we've got the technical backing that we could really expand and we could, you know, potentially have a film school. Yeah, be neat. I, I love the way you're thinking about the, the future. I am um, I'm, I'm thinking, maybe as my, my, my closing thought, thinking about the Institute's mission, mm -hmm. we, yeah. de we develop leaders who advance technology and improve the human condition. And how yeah. you, you connect the concept of, of design is precisely mm -hmm. about deploying technologies and, and, and other the toolkits we have to yeah. improve the human condition. Absolutely. And I think yeah. that's an essential role that the College of Design plays in a place like uh, it's like true. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, we definitely have an impact. and. Uh, you know, it's exciting, I, and I, I love graduation. It always makes me very tearful. But it is because you're watching all these students, you know, all this talent go out in the world, and the impact that they can have for transformation is so big. That's why higher ed is so fun to be in. And I think this is another space where we could excel. Well, I look forward to much more uh, with the College of Design under your leadership. Well, thank well, you thank so you. much for joining me today. All right, appreciate it. Very nice.